Hi, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to balance the equation of C8H18 plus O2 equals CO2 plus H2O. This is a type of combustion reaction. Uh, anytime we have a hydrocarbon and we're adding oxygen to it, producing carbon dioxide and water, it's a type of combustion reaction. Now, not that you really need to know that, but you know, FYI, some good dinner conversation. Um, so what we want to do here when we balance first place in these little lines to the left of the molecules that will represent the location of the coefficients all right, that we're going to place in. Next is to then keep in mind the general principle that whatever uh, the number of atoms we have of a particular element on the left hand side must balance the number of those same atoms of that element on the right hand side. The next thing I'm going to do is just simply look at the first element I see and I have carbon. What I want to do is I want to work with elements that where I have them in only one compound on the left and one compound on the right, and carbon does meet that criteria. So let's balance it. So carbon here has eight, right? There's eight carbons on the left. And on the right-hand side, since there's no subscript for carbon, you assume that it is a one. So we have one carbon on the right. Now we have to balance that, and we wanna place a coefficient on the lower side. So you wanna to think to yourself, what number multiplied, because you think multiplicatively, multiplied by one, would equal then the total number that I had on the larger side, meaning the eight. So obviously, if I plug in an eight here, eight times one, simply going to be a total of eight. And that's balanced carbon, right? So carbon is totally balanced, so let's erase that. Next is, the, is to then move on to hydrogen. So here I have hydrogen in only this compound on the, on the left-hand side, and I have hydrogen only in that compound on the right-hand side, so I wanna balance that, all right? So I have 18 total hydrogen on the left-hand side, I have two total hydrogen on the right-hand side. So what number must I place here, right? What number times two would equal the larger side of 18? So obviously the value is nine. Nine times two would equal 18, and that's how many hydrogen you had on this other side. So that balances now. So that takes care of the hydrogen. Last thing to do is now to move on to oxygen. Okay, now oxygen might be a little more complicated. It's not hard, but it just might be a little more complicated to view. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use math to help us out. All right, I'm gonna use some structure. So how many oxygens do you have in total on the left-hand side? Well, you have two, right? You have two oxygens coming from this one molecule. All right, somehow that has to now balance the total number of oxygen you have on the right-hand side. So work with each molecule uh, by itself, all right? So we have eight, uh, well, let me put it this way. We have eight carbon dioxides, all right? And in each carbon dioxide, we have a total of two oxygens. So if you have eight carbon dioxides and in every carbon dioxide you had two oxygens, how many oxygens are there in total? There would be 16, right? And that's the whole idea. That's why you think multiplicatively, all right? Eight times, sorry if you hear the door going berserk in the background, but the uh, mailman is, uh, you know, across the street. So of course, poses imminent danger. Um, so next move on to the last compound. And uh, remember, here's water. There's one oxygen in every single water molecule, but you got nine waters. So that means you have nine oxygens in total. Now, somehow this math statement has to work out to be true. And obviously right now it isn't true. Two does not equal 25. So our job is to figure out how to make this thing true. Now I'm gonna introduce a variable X. Now I can place that variable in one of three spots here, here, or here, because wherever I place that variable will affect the number of oxygen. Well, one of those places is better than the others. Which one is it? This one. That one's better than all the others. Why? Because if I place a coefficient in this spot, I only affect the oxygen value. If I start messing with this number over here, then I'm gonna also affect the carbon. That's kind of a bummer, because then I gotta go back over here, and then if I affect the carbon, then I'm gonna affect the hydrogen, and then I'm gonna go back over here, and then if I affect the hydrogen, I'm gonna affect the oxygen, and wait a minute, now I, 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 I'm gonna be going around this perpetual circle. All right, and who wants to go around in a perpetual circle? Not I. So the X is gonna go here, the variable is gonna go here. I wanna place in a coefficient here, okay? So mathematically, this is saying some coefficient, some number multiplied by two, so two X, better equal now the total on the right-hand side. So two X is equal to 25, as I mentioned. Divide out the two from both sides, and x will equal 25 over two. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh man, this was easy. I got it. Now he gives me a fraction. It's a fraction. What's he doing? I promise this is easy. Technically, this equation is now balanced with this fraction, okay? I'm just gonna erase the work to clean this up a little bit. So technically, this is balanced now, but it's not complete. And the reason why it's not complete is because you cannot have a fraction of 
a molecule. You can't have 25 over 2 or 12 and a half oxygens. It, you can't have it. Either you have 12 oxygen molecules or you have 13. What's 12 and a half? What's, what's uh, 1.5 people? There's 1.5 people in the room. What? Did Jimmy saw his body in half and put one half in one room and one half in the other? I don't think so, right? That doesn't make any sense. So you can't have a fraction here of a value. Okay? You can't have a fraction of a molecule just like you can't have a fraction of a person. So now I promise you this is very easy. Okay, whatever your denominator value is now of your fraction, that's why the fraction is actually going to be useful. Whatever your denominator value is of the fraction is simply going to be the number you're going to multiply every single coefficient by. Okay, now if you don't see a coefficient like you didn't see a value here, just place in a one for now. Okay, so this denominator value of two, you're going to do two times one. Then you're going to do two times 25 over two. Then you're going to do two times eight and two times nine. Okay, that's what you're going to do. What's two times one? Well, it's two, right? So simply erase everything and plug in a two there. What's two times 25 over two? Now this will always work. Whatever the numerator is, the twos cancel. Okay, they go bye-bye. So this is really easy. You don't have to overthink it. Just plug in the numerator value, 25, okay? What's two times eight? 16, right? And what's two times nine? 18. And now you can go back and double check everything if you want. This is now fully balanced, watch. Let's look at carbon. Two times eight for the carbon is a total of 16 carbon on the left-hand side. We got 16 times the one because there's a subscript of one there for carbon. So 16 carbon on the right-hand side. So that's good. Let's move on to hydrogen. Two times the 18 is a total of 36. So 36 hydrogen on the left. Two times or, or 18 times two right on the right-hand side for hydrogen. Oh, so that's also 36. So that's great. How about oxygen? 25 times two. So that's a total of 50, right? 16 times two, that's going to be a total of 32. And 18 times 1 is going to be a total of 18. And 32 plus 18 is a total of 50. And everything balances. Okay? Everything balances. And that's now the balanced equation. All right? So I hope that helps. It, it's a very simple process to follow. Don't let math scare you. Embrace it. It's going to help you out, not only in school, but honestly in life in general. It depends on what you do. But I have been very, very surprised at the amount of times I've been able to use math to help figure out problems. And especially if you're ever interested in doing any type of building or any anything of the sort, even putting up fences and, you know, thinking about, you know, constructing a, a structure, just basic trigonometry and just some simple algebra is so powerful. Okay. You can really do a lot with it. Um, so don't, you know, and I know you might say, I'm never going to do that. I thought when I was possibly your age that I'd never do it either, but you know what? I wound up doing it later on in life and by gosh, by golly, thank God I paid attention. Um, because I was able to do a lot of the stuff myself. So you never know when stuff is going to come in handy. Be a learning machine. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Please help us out by subscribing, liking, and maybe even telling your friends. All right. We appreciate it very much. I'll see you soon. Take care.